Hey everyone, it's Jeff Farina with PocketNow.com. And recently, you saw our fearless leader, Brandon Miniman, give you a run through of his five must have apps for Android. Well, now it's my turn. I'm actually going to show you the apps that I use most frequently and the most useful must have apps for myself, starting with Pulse. Pulse is an RSS reader that actually brings feeds that you can assign yourself into a graphical interface, as you can see right here. It's very easy to look at, very easy to read. Now, basically, what you, what you can actually do is scroll through these feeds here. Now, I wanted to keep them on one page, so it's easier to use if you pull out your phone quickly and try and navigate through. If you want to add different feeds, you can actually press the settings button up here, and that will allow you to add feeds. What's great about this is you can actually scroll horizontally from left to right through the various stories. For example, if we go down here to the Pocket Now stories, we can pick a story. It will actually load now on the screen. Now, it might be tough to see, but it's text is highlighted here. So this is basically a text-rich format to start, just so that it loads fast. Now, if you want to see the entire article in its glory, you can press the web button, and it will actually open up a in-depth browser within the same application. Now, as you can see, it takes a little longer, and that's why it does do the text first by default, so that it does pull up your, your feed and your article for you very quickly. Once this does load, we'll be able to see the whole article in its glory, look at the pictures, read the article, even post comments if we decide to. So now we can scroll through. And as you can see, you can do everything that you could typically do with the standard Android browser. You can zoom, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. It may not be the fastest experience, but it is the most readily available from within this application. Now, if you want to go back, you just tap the actual article name itself, and you can continue to scroll through the Pocket Now stories here, or you can press the grid button up in the top left corner, and that will bring you back to your entire feed. And once again, the same thing here, we can scroll through, pick a story, and it will load the text first. If you want to play a video, you can actually press the video button, and it will play that video for you from there. So that's Pulse. If you're a big fan of trying to keep up with the news, whether it be tech news, whether it be politics, whether it be business news, you name it, you can add almost any RSS feed into Pulse. So I highly recommend that application. Next up is going to be Dropbox. Now I'm someone who's always on the go. I'm a student, I'm a full-time graduate student. I also work full-time, so I'm always on the go. I always need certain files with me, whether it be homework, whether it be templates for different documents that I may use for my day job. So by having a Dropbox account, which is free, I can also use this Dropbox app. So by actually opening up the Dropbox application now, as you'll see here, it will load, it will show you the icon very quickly. What Dropbox basically is, if you don't know, it's a cloud file service. So you can actually get your files into a cloud. It's basically a hard drive that's on the internet, if you don't know what a cloud is, and they're readily available to you now. So as you can see here, I have all of my different folders, and I can scroll through and you'll see these, these different folders here, as well as various individual documents that aren't in a folder. But let's say, for example, I wanna click on strategic management, it will actually open up that folder, and then you'll be able to see all these documents that I have here. Whether they be a document, a PowerPoint, you name it, we can go ahead and open up a PowerPoint if we decide to. Now what we'll do is actually we'll download it. And depending on what software you have installed in your phone, it will open up that PowerPoint for you within that software. So Dropbox is very cool if you need certain files to always be at your fingertips with you when you're on the go. Whether it be templates, you name it, Dropbox is a great tool for that. The next of my five must-have apps is actually going to be one that I'm using primarily as a widget if we scroll over here, that's going to be Beyond Pod. Now, this is the actual widget here. It has a play button and has a fast forward button. This is the typical standard widget. If I was playing a podcast, it would actually have a podcast title here. This is a podcast player. So if we go ahead and actually open up the application just by clicking on it, as you'll see here, we have the various podcasts. Now, you can add any podcast that has an RSS reader into that feed. And then if you want to actually play the podcast, you can go ahead and click on it. And then you can press play from there. What's very cool about BeyondPod is you can actually set an update schedule. So let's say every night you want your podcast feed to check for new updates to podcasts every morning or every night at 1 a.m., which is what mine does. So that when I wake up at 5 or 6, I have all of my new podcasts already updated, already ready to listen to, and I'm already out the door. It's perfect. So again, if we want to press play, we just press the play button here. And there you go. It's actually playing that podcast now. So Beyond Pod is very useful, very easy to use, and the fact that it does the auto update makes it a win in my opinion. The next application on my must-have app list is actually another app that follows the same theme of being on the go, and that's Log Me In. Now, unfortunately, this 
app does have a pretty high price tag for a typical app, and that's $30. But if you're someone who is always on the go and needs to possibly log into their computer remotely, this is a great option for you. It's very easy to use, very easy to set up. It's essentially dummy proof. So if we go ahead and actually go to the application list here, we can open up Log Me In. And I've already logged in previously. I was actually just using it about five minutes ago. It will give you a list of the computers you have set up here. What you do is you make an account on logmein.com. You set up that account with that computer, and that information is now saved. So as you can see, I have my XP computer, my Windows XP computer at my office, and my iMac, which is actually right here in front of me. Now, let's say I want to log into that iMac. I should go ahead and pick this iMac right here. It's going to establish the connection. It's going to ask you for my password. So I'm actually just going to pull the phone off screen and enter the password real quick. Okay, and I've entered my password, and you're greeted with a quick tips screen that will actually give you some information on how to use this application. As you can see you can pinch in, you can pinch out. If you use two fingers to tap, that's your right click. One will be your typical move. If you tap with one finger, that's going to be your actual click. But let's go ahead and give you the juicy details. So the first thing you're going to see is the login screen for my actual iMac here. If you're a Mac user, this screen will look familiar to you. This is basically where I'm just going to type in my password yet again to log myself in. So as you can see, I've actually clicked on the word blank. Now I just press the keyboard button, which is down here on the left, and that will bring up my keyboard. And yet again, I'm going to pull the phone off screen just to enter my password. So I am now fully logged in, and what you're seeing is my actual desktop on this window here. We can actually pinch just to zoom right in. The last thing I was doing was actually doing some media management within iTunes. You'll see all my movies here um, that are within the actual iTunes feed. And as you can see, we have iTunes here. We can, of course, zoom in, zoom out. Now, if I want to minimize this application, I literally just put the actual mouse over the minimize button and just tap anywhere on the screen, and that will then minimize it for me. Now, my iMac, once again, is right in front of me here, and you're, this is actually minimizing it on my screen itself. As you'll see, there sometimes is quite a, a delay, but once again, for remote management, that's a small sacrifice to have. This app is dynamic in that you can turn it into landscape and actually use it in landscape mode, as you'll see right here. This is actually a much better experience. It's a much better browsing experience, especially when you're using the browser, which is what I'm doing right now. We have Google Chrome opened up, and we can actually go ahead and type in a website up here in the blank. So I've clicked on it, and once again, I'm going to press that keyboard button. And we'll type in Pocket Now. We can actually scroll over here. You'll see that it populated like it usually does. I'm going to press the Enter button, and that's going to load Pocket Now. Now, it does load first on the iMac. And then from there, it has to actually beam this picture to the phone itself. What we can do now is press the X button to get rid of our keyboard. And as you'll see, we have Pocket Now here ready to go. Now, one thing, this will not play. It'll play flash videos if you're looking to do that with your device. However, it won't play the sound. Now, that's how they basically are able to offer you the best experience. The bandwidth would be greatly lost if they were playing the flash sound to you. So you can watch a YouTube video that is flash or a full flash video but it's going to be a little bit choppy. The frame rate isn't going to be the best. Last but not least is going to be better keyboard. Now this is an actual skin for your keyboard. You may have noticed this is actually a Dell Streak, which is a five inch screen device. Now the keyboard that it comes with is very functional. It's very easy to use. However, it doesn't have any kind of shortcut commands with the numbers and that sort of thing. Now using a keyboard skin like better keyboard will allow you to actually get the keyboard commands, much like what the HT Sense keyboard offers. So for example, if I click here, now you've already seen it in action, I can actually now hold down this top row or any of these letters here to actually get the symbols or the number. So if I hold down the U, for example, it will turn into a seven, as you just saw on that screen. Now, better keyboard will allow you to customize the keyboard, like I said. So if you're looking for a smaller keyboard, a darker keyboard, there's even iPhone replicas of the keyboard. This will give you that option to fully customize your device as you see fit. As Brandon mentioned in his post, please leave a comment with your must-have apps. Let us know what you're using every day and what you think. Please give this video a thumbs up and stay tuned for the rest of the editing crew of PocketNow.com to show you their must-have top five apps. Thanks, everyone.